Hey guys, let's talk about some knives. First thing off, I just want to say thank you to all the channel members. Thank you all very much. And thank you to anybody that comes in to watch my knife, my EDC content. I appreciate it. If you're so inclined, and you would, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon. It really helps me out. So today, what I was going to do was go through my top five I would call them medium range, i.e. not super expensive, but not inexpensive. They're USA made knives. I'll call them under 300. That's going to be a little bit variation. And I'll try to give you in the video my memory of the cost. And then I'll list it in the description. So starting off, because I can't count and it wouldn't make my picture look even. This is the, ax the Axial Gear, or Axial Knives Shift. It is an OTF that is available in several different blades. You can get it in a dagger blade, you can get it in a drop point blade, you can get it in this Tonto, or you can get it in a Warncliffe. It is made, if I'm not mistaken, in Dallas, Texas. I know in the USA, you've got an aluminum handle here, a really nice, titanium pocket clip goes in and out of pocket very well you've got a magna cut blade um, so all you see on this knife is a usa uh, emblem there it is kind of an acid etched blade and it's not super super thick so for an otf which are typically at least in my memory kind of not as slicey knives guys i'm sorry i've got to make it easier to get this paper out of my ring see i just boogered up but anyway this is a very nice slicey knife and it's very pokey whoops super pokey super stabby and very good for EDC. Like I said, up until about a year ago, OTFs were not even a consideration of mine because I didn't find them functional, really. And then I got the EDC or EMP EDC Pulse, the first Warncliffe, and realized it did have a blade like an EDC knife and it was functional. Axial's done a great job, and I'm sure Microtech does too. I've just never owned a Microtech, but this, uh, Shift, now I think it's the Shift 3.0, is fantastic knife, well under $300, I want to say about $269, you get it in a lot of different configurations, right now they just dropped a big batch of all these multicolored ones, so that's a really cool knife, we're going to call it number 6 on this list, um, and they're not in that much of a dedicated order, but we're going to start with number 6, and that's going to be the Axial Knives Shift 3.0, the Tonto. Moving on, we come to a fantastic knife. Probably one of my favorite bench mates for sure. And definitely one of my most robust bench mates, even though it's a mini. This is the Benchmade Mini Adamas. It is in CPM crew wear. It gave me the worst finger cut just when I was doing an adjustment and I had the blade tilted up like so, and I was adjusting my pivot, and it fell down and snapped and scissored on my outside of my pinky. And I thought, man, I'm glad it hit my nail. And then I looked, and it went all the way through my nail, cut deep into my finger, and sucked. But this knife is rugged. It's got a very thick, robust blade. It's made out of crew wear. It had G10 handles and it had those speed holes in the handles, like the Mini Adamas does. One of the things that made this knife a lot more carryable and a not lot more enjoyable to me were these scales. And these are um, aluminum scales from uh, AWT. I wanna say they ran me about 99 bucks. The knife, when I got it, was under 200. I think the Mini Adamas is close to 200 now. And the scales are by no means necessary. They're just what I found to be a nice option because it made the knife look kind of unique. 
um, and it didn't have the speed holes. Comes with a deep carry clip. This crew wear blade is treated and you've got this little fuller or this little blood groove that runs down. I don't know if that's just for looks or added stability. But this knife, as far as Benchmades goes, feels extremely solid. Uh, the full-size Adamas is a monster. It's a really big knife because when you look at Benchmade minis, which I've got many of them, M-A-N-Y, not M-I-N-Y, M-I-N-I, -I, but I've got many minis, and this is by far bigger than every other mini in my Benchmade collection. This is close to the size of my bug out. So it's a good size knife. I consider it a medium size knife more than a mini. Definitely one of my favorites. Now I think it's a great value for Benchmade who's, you know, hasn't done anything that's blown my skirt up lately, but this is a great knife. Benchmade Mini Adamas. Moving on, we come to one of my favorite Spydercos. I'll be stopped short of saying my favorite Spyderco, but it's probably my most carried Spyderco because of the mod that I did to it, or a couple of little mods. The first was, this was a Knife Center exclusive, uh, black G10, uh, CPM, crew wear blade. I picked it up for, I think, about 199 bucks, and then I found these rock scale designs. I think this is the dragon pattern, just in a gray scales, and uh, what was great about these scales and why I was drawn to them is they were linerless, which meant I did not need to use the steel liner that's in the Manix 2. That has the jimping. A lot of people love that liner. It gives it, you know, more rugged grip. You've got those, that jimping all the way around the liner. But when I was able to take it out, it makes the knife very smooth, very ergonomically pleasing in just a regular hand. And it's a great EDC knife, EDC size knife. Um, works very, very well. One of the most slicey knives in my collection. And let's get some paper. And it does have a, I've not sharpened this, not really stropped it. Um, but it is these leaf blades from Spyderco and the blade geometry and the way they just come from the factory. I mean, this is a fantastically sharp knife and a banger I could just sit here and therapeutically cut but this is a Spyderco Manix 2 the other upgrade I did to it is I went to I, I got a titanium or flytanium purple little ball cage thing here so I could replace the black plastic one but then I went to uh, OCD for EDC and picked up the ceramic ball and the lighter spring kit which makes that spring a lot easier to pull back makes the action of this knife great I've got it really tightened down that's why it's not fall shutty but I've got absolutely no play great knife very ergonomical fantastic made in Golden Colorado Spider Co one of my favorites, if not my favorite Spyderco, and that's the Manix 2. And then moving on, we come to number three. And number three is a fantastic, fantastic knife from Tactile Turn. Now, this knife was actually sent to me from Tactile Turn to check out, to try out, and um, I absolutely love it this is a knife that i would have bought or would buy if i lost it in a heartbeat um, it does everything i like about the demco shark lock or the snex lock because this is a snex lock just like on my vision uh r or my vision fg the two Wii's that i have that have the snex lock this uh Tactile Turn has the Snex Lock. It's a made in America, aluminum bodied, Magna Cut blade, sheep's foot, which I love the look of the knife. I'm a big fan of a sheep's foot blade, and this blade is done very well. I think the heat treats right around 63, 64. It's got 
wonderful blade geometry for EDC, which is what I use it for. It carries very well. This is the standard clip. They also make a lynch clip version of this with the custom lynch clip, but this is just the standard clip. The stone wash blade. I think you can also get this in a, a satin, satin blade. But this guy comes in, if I'm not mistaken, at $269 or at $289 with the titanium clip. Uh, it's the tactile turn. Koopa Cabra? I don't know if I called it something different when I started this. I have no memory of that. But it's the Koopa Cabra. And if I called it anything different, it's because of old age and early Alzheimer's. Now I apologize. But great knife. Thick knife. So it's not very dainty. It's got a nice grip. Feels really good in my hand. And like I say, the blade is set up for cutting. It's just a great shape great grind and it does exceptionally well i'm a big fan of it it is the tactile turn or tactile knife company coupe cabre or coupe cabre so that brings us to number two which is a knife that's been in my collection for quite a while but this is actually a replacement which is a testament to the service that ProTech provides the customer care. I've got a hair under my lynch clip. But I had a situation where it wasn't even really a situation, but I bought this knife at Blade Show from Dave at ProTech back in 2022, right when they dropped. So it was one of the first Mordaxes that came out. This thing's covered in tippy hair. But um, it was one of the first Mordaxes that came out. And it had a little bit of detent lash. Nothing that really bothered me because it was so mild. But it was one of those things that I've also got a ProTech Malibu. And they were the, the Malibu was the knife that turned me on to a plunge lock. I really loved that knife. It was kind of the first time I experienced anything like that. So the Mordax for me, when it came back, gives me more of that to love. It's more of a medium size knife medium to almost large size knife it has magna cut instead of 20 cv i like the uh, sculpted scales but long story short i finally just decided well i'm going to call protect and see what they think you know because it wasn't bad at all i mean it barely even moved i could just have a little bit of rock in it which this one has none and i called and i got a young lady on the phone and i told her what i was dealing with where i got it when i got it and was it something that I should even send in? I was kind of asking her. She goes, absolutely. If you don't mind, you will have to put in a check for, I think it was 15 bucks for return shipping. But if you don't mind doing that, I would definitely send it in because we can fix it. There was an issue with the first, I forget how many hundred that they did where they had a few that had detent lash. And she goes, we'd love to make it right. So anyway, I had the original box, put it in a box, uh, put my check in the box, sent it to the uh, address that they gave me. I had to print out a little form that I filled out too, just to keep it all straight, and um, sent it in, right? Everything just back to ProTech. Eight days, maybe nine, and that's not business days, that's total days. It was like a week and a day later, it came back FedEx Express, or FedEx Overnight, and um, it was on my porch. I got an email that it was coming, yada, yada. So I opened it up, and of course, the detent lash was gone. It was perfect. Looking at it closer, I realized that they totally replaced the knife. I had some snail trails on my Mordax that are not on this Mordax. Um, I had a little mark on the blade that is not on this knife. It basically, they replaced the knife, I guess because it was too much to fix that little detent lash or there was something that they weren't happy with the way they did it. But anyway, nobody likes to deal with customer service because that means you've typically got a problem. But mine wasn't really a problem. It was more of a question that turned into a we can make it better and, you know, we would like to make it better. So hats off to ProTech not only for making this knife, which is a fantastic knife, I think it's around right under $300, uh, $300, $289, I think, maybe. I'll leave some links um, in my description, but it's a great knife. One of my favorites It's going to come in at number two on this list, and we are now to number one, which is another recent knife 
that was kindly sent to me from uh, Marianne Halpern at T, uh, TRM, Three Rivers Manufacturing, to check out, um, for the channel to check out. And she knows because for the last three and a half years, I've been wearing them out. I buy almost everything. I have bought everything that they released except for a titanium shadow. You can't put scales on a shadow. Um, I have a regular shadow, which I love, but this is the TRM Bulldog. It's their second knife to use the River Lock, which is their version of the Bar Lock. I can tell you the way that the cage is done on both this and the shadow, the way that the little pullback uh, studs are done on the bar, the way that it feels, it doesn't have much detent because it's a bar lock, right? But they gave you the blade hole and it's absolutely flickable. It's got snap. It's a smaller knife, about the size of the TRM Neutron, but it is, and I didn't cut with the Mordax. That's my squirrel brain. I apologize, guys. But it is Magna Cut instead of 20 CV, like my latest nerd. It's the thickest folding knife that TRM has made from blade stock. So it's got much thicker blade stock than my other TRMs. So it's a hardy knife. It's got a splinter digger point and it's just fantastic. I love this knife. I've been carrying it pretty much constantly because it's G10. It's very light. It fits my hand perfectly. Kind of everything I love about TRM and it's something a little bit different that I hadn't tried out in a while. Love the deep carry clip. It's just a great knife. I'm a huge fan. Let's get the Mordax a chance to show its beef. I've heard people getting these reground, and I could see how it could benefit from a hollow grind, but I really believe that this Mordax from uh, without drop, I guess the rebirth of the Mordax when Protec brought it back. Um, I think the blade's thinner. I think the geometry is slightly different. Um, I've looked at them. My buddy A to Z EDC also has one, and I'm, I think it's a little bit different. But anyways, these are my top five, which is really six. We'll start out with number six, which is our axial gear, axial knives, shift we've got our bench made adamus not adamus uh, adamus uh mini we've got our spider cool manix 2 we have got our tactile knife company cupacabre we've got our protec mordax and we have got our three rivers manufacturing trm bulldog the latest release from trm guys all great American knives, all right around and under that $300 range, right in there. And I know that's a lot of money. That's by no means a budget knife. I mean, you can buy a Civivi, really nice knife, my budget knife of the year, I think, for about 54 bucks. So I'm not by any means being slight on the cost of these, but compared to other USA-made knives that are done very well, I think these are all very good values. Thank you for taking time to check out my video on my knife, my EDC content. I really do appreciate it. I do ask, if you would, look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. And choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.